Thank you, thank you, thank you. I am so glad you're all here tonight. This is gonna be a really fun show. I'm pretty sure of it. Uh, one of the most important things I think about being Alaskan has to do with, well, fish, I know. I'm a fish witch from Homer, what do you want? It's important to me and uh, we've got a great panel lined up. It's been a very interesting week here in uh, Lake Wobegon, I mean Anchorage. Uh, we've got a mayor right now who's running for Scrooge. I think about uh, 60 Alaskans are gonna lose their jobs in the next week. We've got Sarah Palin coming to the bases, which apparently are tomato free in this state, uh, to sign some books. We, we just, we've got so many different things going on, but I wanted to slow everything down and reel everything back so that we could do, well, a fish show. Um, some great people coming in. Carol Ann Woody's gonna be here. Uh, she's a biologist and she's smoking hot wonderfully beautiful and smart and is saving fish all over the, all over the state. Um, we've got Sean Dockerman, who's a crab fisherman from, uh, from Kodiak and has been one for a long time. So if you've seen Deadliest Catch, he's kind of a big deal. He's way bigger deal than they are. Um, and then let's see, who else do we have? Oh, Tim Smith from Nome. He didn't come in on a dog sled, but uh, he's up there. He's monitoring all kinds of things. He's a fisherman, a biologist, a pilot. Uh, he's gonna be great. And uh, also Stephen Toppin coming in. And Stephen Toffin, if you listen to the radio show, has been on, he's a whistleblower. Uh, he's been a witness for the government. Yes, he has. And so if I told you why, I'd have to kill you, so I won't, but he's gonna be here. So it's gonna be a really fun panel. So uh, stick around, we'll be right back with more Up North. Thank you all, thank you all so much. Um, I am really excited about this evening's program and our panel. Um, very few things are important to me, I guess as part of my identity, as fishing. I grew up fishing, it's, uh, it's you know, once you've fished, you never go back. I don't know what the sayings are. Uh, but uh, Dr. Carol Ann Woody is here with us, and um, she she has been amazing. She's, it's, I'm kind of starstruck, frankly, because I have this, you know, this idea that women in Alaska can be stunningly beautiful and brilliant, uh, despite what we've seen uh, over the last, well, couple years. And so I really wanted her to come on, not just for being beautiful, but for being brilliant and all of her work that she's done uh, with fisheries. Uh, she's a fishery biologist, and she was at the Alaska Science Center uh, here in Anchorage for years, and now she has her own consulting firm. So welcome to the show. Thank you. Dr. Woody. Thank you. I'm very pleased to be here, and thank you for inviting me. Can I call you Carol Ann? Yes. Okay, good, because that's just, you know, Dr. Woody, I don't know. <laughs> um, so tell me, you have, so you have a new business now. Right. What, what brought you to, to sort of leave the government and, and all of these sort of really structured science programs that you were in to start your own, your own company? Well, I had been um, working uh, with USGS many years doing research on subsistence species, namely salmon and whitefish. And then um, I have worked on a number of mining projects, Galore Creek and then also uh, the Pebble Mine. And the Pebble Mine project came along and um, as you well know, it's political and things got a little hot at USGS and I decided it might be best for me to go and start my own company. And so that's what I've done. I've been working with nonprofits and tribes and uh, other groups and focusing quite a bit of research on um, mining issues. Well, we've talked, I, I, I've had as a guest uh, Dr. Rick Steiner on, who has just now left the university because the politics are crowding the science. Mm -hmm. and, and so that was your experience as well? Well, it definitely, it definitely got a little bit, um, warm there because uh, it was also under the Bush administration and uh, there were quite a few um, stipulations put on scientists as far as what could be shared and what couldn't and um, I'd been working with subsistence people for quite a while and I had you know when people go to villages and explain to them that they're going to wash minerals out of rock using organic soap um, I thought it was part of my job to explain to them that they weren't talking about Dr. Bronner's, that they could be talking about other carbon-based chemicals such as sodium cyanide or um, other things that you really wouldn't want near your fish or your water. Or yourself. Or yourself. For that matter. So 
Um, tonight, you know, we've got a panel of, a lot of different fishermen, different mm -hmm. issues, uh, whether it be, you know, the sort of uh, fishing industrial complex and how that affects Alaska and our tax base and all these things. But in, in the science that, you're, that you've been studying and, and what you've been looking at, how long do we have to even fight over these fish? Because there are already salmon stocks that are having a really hard time. There are her herring that have completely gone away. So what are you seeing on that? Because I know, you know the world's only 4,000 years old, but what are you seeing there? Well, the history of humans and salmon is uh, actually a very sad one. And there's a great book I'd like to recommend to the viewers. It's called King of Fish by Dave Montgomery, who recently spoke to the Board of Fish. And in it, one of the things, I, I've read it, and one of the things that first struck me reading it is that Caesar's legions used to catch Atlantic salmon out of the heart of London in the Thames River, which is now just basically a polluted canal. Um, salmon stocks in the Atlantic, on the Atlantic uh, side of North America, are at 2% of historic levels. 2%? Um, 2%. Two, two percent? Two percent. 2% of historic levels. They use to sustain commercial and subsistence fisheries and uh, sport fisheries. And there's still some sport fisheries, but um, quite a few of those populations are endangered. Uh, in the contiguous United States, on the western side, the Pacific salmon there are at 10, 10% of historic levels. Um, popul uh, populations of salmon have been extirpated from over 40% of their uh, historic habitats. Canada is not doing much better. They also um, have quite a few endangered populations that have declined, including the Fraser River. Um, they have endangered sturgeon there, endangered coho. And many of you may know that uh, this is the third year in a row that fisheries in the Fraser River, which is the largest salmon producing river in Canada, um, suffered closures again this year. So it's not doing well. It's a, it's a sad picture. and. Where are we at in historic levels in Alaskan waters? So in Alaska, I mean, we are in, you know, the enviable state of having piles of salmon. I mean, we have amazing salmon runs. I mean, Bristol Bay, we had 40 million, 40 million fish come back this year. Right, with, with no salmon enhancement. No enhancement. These are all wild fish, which um, in uh, many parts of the states, they thought in the lower 48, they thought that they could build dams, they could have cheap electricity and salmon and they thought that they could make salmon with these hatcheries and, and they didn't do very well, they failed. Um, because in many situations, hatchery fish can interbreed with wild fish. And since wild fish are adapted, have specific adaptations to the streams they're born in, that can, um, well, some people call it, geneticists call it genetic contamination, but it can make them less able to survive by mixing genes with hatchery fish. Yeah, it seems like a bad idea. So across, I mean, across, you know, the whole fact that these salmon keep coming back is because their genetic code has been so strong. So to mix that with something that was catered to in a pen or uh, in a hatchery is just, it just, obviously it's going to weaken what's wild. Well, it's hard to teach hatchery reared fish how to survive in the wild. It's, they're pretty vulnerable. They're finding new ways to try to train them, but it's still problematic. Well, this topic, I know we could have 10 shows on, fisheries in Alaska, so easily. And I can go on forever. No, and, and, and uh, I'm looking forward to our panel coming up, and I want to thank you so much for your work. It's amazing. It really is. And I, have, um, I, I don't have lots of heroes, but the ones I do, you're on the list. Uh, I'm Shannon Moore, Caroline Woody. Thank you so much, Dr. Woody. And uh, we'll be right back after this break.